I'm telling you, all these ties are my fault. It's straight up celestial payback for the Man City game. There I was wishing and hoping for a friggin' tie. And now the karma police are making good on showing me what I get when I mess with them. The team's playing well, Chad. Just a little unlucky, that's all. Unlucky? Yeah. Man, I love the way y'all use that word over here. Back home, if a team was playing poorly, we don't call them unlucky. What do we call them, coach? New York Jets. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> what a dig. Oh, what an unnecessary dig. Jets. Those poor, poor Jets fans. Oh, no. Screw the Jets fans. <laughs> I can't stand the Jets. And the fact that they took a shot at the Jets, yeah. oh, that just makes me so happy with, as a Dolphins fan. I haven't been able to stand the Jets since they came back on Monday Night Football, my <laughs> Dolphins. They were down by like 40 points, and they came back and beat us. I've despised them ever since. You know, I was worried that the America versus Britain shtick, you know, the cultural differences might get old uh, eventually. But they're able to keep it fresh because they don't linger on it too long. And it's not a big part of the show. They just drop little jokes here and there just as a reminder. And, you know, every sometimes, you know, Coach Beard and Ted Lasso will say something to each other and the British folks kind of look in a weird way or vice versa, where, you know, the British folks will say <laughs> yeah. something. And in this episode. Ted goes to Coach Beard. He's like, it's almost like we live in a foreign country or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it, just little stuff like that. They they're able to keep it fresh because they don't focus on it so much. Um, yeah, no, but that, yeah, that whole scene, the, the back and forth, mm-hmm. the ties, because he didn't he didn't want a tie. He was like, no, there's there's no such word. We're not we're not going to worry about a tie. Right and now, you know, they're what they're eight in. <laughs> Yeah, so this psychotic break of Danny Rojas, I mean, he has this tragedy, honestly. Like, you know, uh, Ted Lasso is able to kind of save grace and save face um, in in, uh, in the press conference there with uh, – what's the what's the reporter's name? Ted Grimm? Oh, or Ted Grimm. Yeah, Ted Grimm he, from the yeah, – uh, 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 Oh, God, he says it so much. He, the Independent, yeah. The How could I forget? Because yeah. it's funny, all the actual reporters said where he was from. <laughs> right. Yeah, so he brings it up, and so Ted tells this, you know, uh, very kind of long-winded story about his youth. With Ted and, uh, style, uh, uh, yeah, you know, answer. But but it captured the reporters' hearts and minds, and they were fine. And he was just like, you know, I hope Danny isn't taking it too hard on himself. And we we take a jump cut to Danny, who's just like crying and praying in the shower, in the shower. clothes. And uh, he's broken. Basically, he was like the big positive energy in season one. Um, and to see him broken is not a good thing for the team. So not at all. Um, so they they make the decision to uh, bring a, a sports uh, psychiatrist onto the team to to help him out. And like you mentioned, Ted's uh, a little cold on that idea at first. Yeah, he he wasn't all about it. I mean, he yeah. was talking. He I mean, well, they were actually. I think it was both him and Coach Beard were in, were in the pub. Yeah, they're going back and forth. He was like, you know, I'm not sure exactly how he says, you know, get real with your friend, you know put your beer down real type thing. And they're going right. Back right. Yeah. Yeah. And they really got to it. And, and actually coach beard flipped it on him. Yeah. He was like, you remember what you told me when I was dating that, that dancer from the cruise line. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I love those little, little scenes, those little character nuggets about coach beard. It's so funny. So they're, they're going back and forth with that. And then at the end of it, he's like, you, you told me, Oh, uh, I think I, don't quote me on this, but he's like, everybody's their own somebody or something like that. Everyone, everyone, everyone's different. Right. So he's like, you know, give it a chance. This may, may actually be better for everybody. I think he's almost hinting towards, it may be good for you. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think so. Um, because, you know, of course this, the sports psychiatrist, she gets there, the psychologist and she's, you know, everybody's kind of jokey and warm and stuff. And, you know, Ted set set the behavior and set the pattern and set the uh, the bar there for how folks interact with each other. And they're kind of like a family. And she comes in and she's just very kind of stoic and not really laughing at jokes and not very warm. But well, she, she is leaves kind of on a good note when she asks them what their record was. Right. And she's like, impressive. <laughs> and she kind of walks. Right. So you kind of seen a little bit of a personality out of her at the very end of the interaction when they're in the room together. You do. And you get a glimpse and you do uh, what I found to be very interesting. She's, fl- um, you know, Ted's kind of him and Holland about her being there. And she's like, you know, don't look at them. Are, are you good at what you do? 
And it's not something you hear from people very often. Just like, don't give me a wishy-washy answer. Just tell me, no, yes or no. Are you good at what you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Ted, after a moment, pause. He's like, yeah, you know, I believe I am good at what I do. And she's she says to him, as good as you are at what you do, I'm twice as good as what I do. Yeah. She's like, I believe you, but I'm twice as better. <laughs> right. Which it's like when somebody can walk around with that confidence and this is your first time meeting them, it's kind of like it kind of shakes you a bit. You're like, oh, OK. All right. Well, this person <laughs> means business. <laughs> yeah. They, they can handle themselves. OK, so we're going to move on here. <laughs> she's very intimidating. Um, so don't much. Call so. Her doc. No, don't don't call her doc. It's a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> um very intimidating to the fact that, that um oh what's uh, rebecca's assistant's name gosh i forget uh, i'm gonna have to have a imdb page pulled up for her oh, after yeah, show here. No, that, that's terrible he gives up his <clears throat> office to he her he does yeah and he's like are you doing this to be nice or because you, you have to he's like a little bit of both <laughs> <laughs> right um which is you know so higgins, higgins yes absolutely thank you hey we got it um <laughs> But that's kind of the, the theme of this episode. That's kind of um, uh, Ted's uh, kind of uh, conflict of this episode is not sure. He's not sure how he feels about this new person in this this home, this environment that they've created for themselves. 